Okay, um, next section of this week topic is on improper integral. So in, improper integral happens when the interval is infinite and also when the f, the function f has an infinite discontinuity in, a, uh, in the interval a and b. So there are two types of improper integral. Type 1 is infinite uh, integral and type 2 is the discontinuous integrand. So we will go through um, how do we identify what kind of improper integrals there are. Type 1, infinite integral. So um, okay, as we mentioned, improper integral, there are two types. Type 1 is infinite integral and type 2 is discontinuous inter in intervals. So type 1, infinite interval, for example, let's say if you want to evaluate this function here uh, from 1 to infinity, so your function is 1 over x squared with respect to x. So here you know that infinity is not a real number. So we cannot just um, integrate as normal and then plug in the limit uh, as infinity to get the answer. So when you integrate the function 1 over x squared, you need to substitute the upper limit here instead of the infinity, you want to put some value, a t. Okay, in this case, let's put uh, it as t, where t is any number that is greater than 1 and see uh, what will happen if t, the value t, approaches infinity. Okay, so here, okay, that, this is what how the graph would look like. If you have the function uh, y equals to 1 over x square so you want to find the area from x equals to 1 towards infinity but you cannot just simply plug in the infinity so when you integrate 1 over x squared you will get 1 over x minus 1 over x so your lower limit is 1 but your upper limit you cannot just put um, infinity so you have to put any value t so when you just key in the value t here so you get a uh, minus 1 over t minus 1 over 1 so you get equal to 1 minus 1 over t so now we want to see um, what 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 will happen to the area when t approaches infinity and notice that the area as a function of t will be less than 0 no matter how large t is chosen because um, a as a function of t is always 1 minus 1 over t so it's always 1 minus something so it is always less than 1 so we also um, so we want to observe that if we put a limit as t approaches infinity for the area of t then um, you see here right this is the the function i mean the, the value that you would use to evaluate the integral and it, when t approaches infinity then the value of 1 over t 1 over a large number is um, will be approaches will, will be approaching 0 so 1 minus 0 would be uh, going towards 1 so the limit of the area under the graph of this 1 over x squared curve um, from 1 until infinity so the limit is t towards going towards infinity the value equals to 1 the limit equals to 1 so this is a type 1 where the infinite intervals where you the interval is infinite because um, there's asymptote okay asymptote to <laughs> horizontal asymptote I mean Okay, so um, in the case of infinite interval itself, essentially there are three cases of type 1 improper integrals that we need to deal with. Okay, there are uh, three cases. So look at the first case. So if the function fx, we, you integrate from a to t and the, the value of t here is always greater than a, then um, you calculate at, as a limit. You, you want to find a value, okay? You don't want to just leave it hanging as infinity. So you write down the value as limit of the integral from a to t as of a function fx dx as t approaches infinity, provided this limit exists as a finite number. Um, and in case number b, in case b here, um, if you integrate the function x of x with respect to x from t to b, so here the value of t here is less than b okay so then it is going to the left side of the y-axis then you want to integrate here uh, from negative infinity to b so you want to write down as 
uh, the limit is um, as t approaches negative infinity and you integrate fx dx from the value t um, to the upper value b and also provided the limit exists as a finite number and case number three is where the improper integrals are convergent um, if the corresponding limits Wait, wait, wait. Let me let me rephrase that. If the limit exists for any improper integrals, then you call the integrals convergent. But if the limit does not exist, it has no limit, then the function or uh, the integral is divergent. Okay. So let's say if you combine the limit here in case C, if both a the integrals of fx dx from a to infinity and the integral of fx dx from negative infinity to a are convergent, then you can combine combine the integrals from negative infinity to positive infinity, if you want to say that, um, like this. Okay, so this is the combined version, then you can break it down into two parts. So a value here, a value here. So in the first part is negative infinity to a, and the second part is um, a to positive infinity. In part C, any real number A uh, can be used. Okay, let's just um, do some example to help you visualize what do these uh, types of proper in, improper integral uh, actually mean. How, how is it going to be useful for you actually? Right, example 9. So we want to see um, for type 1 improper integral, determine whether the, the given function here, the, the given integral here, uh, is convergent or divergent. So uh, we mentioned in the previous slide that if there is a limit, if there is a finite number to the limit, then we say that the integral is convergent. If there is no limit, if you, let's say, you put the t and as t approaches infinity, there is no limit, there's no value that you can replace, then uh, it will be called divergent. So these are the steps that you want to follow to determine whether the integral is convergent or divergent. So first, you want to replace the upper limit um, infinity with a variable t. Then you want to convert the integral into a limit integral pair. Evaluate the integral with the new limit and see what happens when t approaches infinity. If um, when t approaches infinity, a finite number is obtained, then the integral is convergent. But if the result is, uh, if, if you say that as t approaches infinity, the result is either positive or negative infinity, meaning there is no limit, then the integral is thus divergent. So let's do that in the next slide. Okay, so this one, we want to evaluate whether the integral from 1 to infinity of the function 1 over x dx is it uh, Convergent or divergent? So when you integrate 1 over x, you get ln of x. Okay, so you want to know uh, from x equal to 1 until x equals to t and see what happens as t approaches positive infinity. So what you want to do is you continue with the limit uh, notation. So put t inside and then put 1 then ln 1 is equal to 0 so you will be left with just the limit as t approach, approaches to infinity ln t so what will happen when you put a large number and uh, you find out the natural logarithm in it will you be approaching a finite number or will you get some large number so you can if you want to do this you can take your calculator or uh, Excel and put some values in it then um, you put a large value okay you first you try to put t equals to 2 t equals to 3 and see if the number increases or not and then as you put more uh, larger numbers you know that it's not going to be finite as t approaches to infinity ln t will also approach infinity okay so you can say that as t approaches infinity ln of t also approaches infinity thus there is no limit okay no limit no limit thus it is divergent so this integral is divergent it's not convergent okay the 
Next example is still on the type 1 improper integral. So we want to determine this integral if it's convergent or divergent. If it is convergent, let's find the value. So let's see, uh, in this case, your function is being uh, integrated from the limit negative infinity to positive infinity. So what we need to do is first to split the integral into two separate integrals because both limits have infinity. And then we convert the limit integral pair, which uh, each separate integral, replace the limit in, uh, infinity with variable t. And look uh, what happened when t uh, approaches infinity or negative infinity. Uh, if, if, if it is convergent, let's um, find the value at which it is convergent. Okay, so for this example, we want to split. So from the original integral from negative infinity to positive infinity of x times e exponential of minus x squared dx. So we want to break it down to negative infinity to a value a, x e negative x squared dx plus starting from a this time to positive infinity x e minus x squared dx. Um, right, but here we don't want to just leave it at a because otherwise we cannot find the value. So we need to select a actual value here. So what would be easy for you? So um, exponential of something. Okay, exponential of one. If you key in the calculator, you get two point something something something. But you know that um, when you learn indices exponential or in whatever to the power of zero you will get one so let's select a equals to zero uh, so that uh, it's easier okay just put zero here and zero here so what's next we need to use some u substitution to make uh, our life easier to integrate so when we um, let's use u equals to x squared then du equals to 2x dx Okay, so now you have the term x dx and x dx here. So you can just simply uh, replace that x dx equals to du over 2. So then you get from negative infinity to 0, um, e to the power of minus u, du over 2, plus from 0 to positive infinity, e to the minus u, um, du over 2 as well. Okay. So when you um, integrate the exponential term, you will still remain with the exponential term. So then in this first part here, let's see, um, put it here as t, and here is t. Okay. What see? Let what happen if t approaches negative infinity in the first part of this integral? from t to 0 plus the limit as t approaches positive infinity you will still get negative from 0 to t but this time t is approaching uh, negative infinity and positive infinity so when you put in, you will get um, e to the power of 0 is just 1. So 1 over 2 minus 1 over 2 t negative t. Oh, don't forget the limit term. Okay, plus the limit as t approaches positive infinity uh, okay so this e to the power of zero is also just one okay then uh, you get one over two minus one over two is just zero okay zero so you can see that um, as t approaches infinity, the exponential, as t approaches a large number in negative, uh, in positive or negative, the value will be zero. 
okay the value will be zero you can check with your calculator so here we can say that the value um, everything here will be zero as t approaches negative infinity it will be zero here as t approaches positive infinity it will be zero here as well so the actual value is eventually zero so this function here this integral here is actually um, convergent so um I want to stop here and uh, I will show you on Thursday on this particular function that if you go to a website, any website, graphing calculator, you can just put graphing calculator on Google and try to graph this function x e minus x squared. Then you will get something like uh, something like this, uh, I think. So you can see that when you combine all these um, area under the graph from the left side and the right hand side of the y axis um, it cancels out and becomes zero so it's only makes it only makes sense to have this uh, integral equal to zero and it is actually a convergent integral okay type two of the improper integral is discontinuous integrand so the difference is just that uh, it's the integral that has discontinuous limit so if you compare type 2 and type 1, in type 1, the asymptote is horizontal in the x-axis direction. But in type 2, the asymptote is vertical, i.e. the asymptote is in the uh, y-axis direction. So if you have any function y equals to fx, and then it goes somewhere, it doesn't touch uh, anything. I mean, it will just keep on going uh, up to the y-axis and it becomes discontinuous at x equals to b. So this is what we mean by discontinuous uh, integrands. So if you look at this, um, integral of fx dx from a to b, and you look at the limit as t approaches b uh, negative. So what it means here by having this negative superscript at b is that t approaches b from the negative side, from the left-hand side, okay, t approaches b approaches b from the left hand side so that's why it has a negative sign here you will see in the next example that we also have positive meaning t approaches b at, well, from the right hand side from the positive side similarly like type 1 there are three different uh, definition for improper integral of type 2 so the first case is when f is continuous on a and discontinuous at b notice the difference in the bracket here so if the bracket is a square bracket it's not a curved bracket so meaning a is still continuous but b is where the function become uh, discontinuous so you want to evaluate so you cannot really in um, substitute the b inside the integral because there the function becomes discontinuous so you can just um, put it as t and find out what happens as uh, t approaches b from the negative side okay and the second is when the uh, when you put when you have the same integral but this time f is continuous at b and discontinuous at a so notice the um, different signs of the bracket also so it, it, it is discontinuous at a meaning here discontinuous at the left hand side so as t approaches a from the positive side, so it approaches a from the right to the left, uh, then you can write down the limit from t to b, uh, meaning because you cannot just simply put a here because it, then it will be discontinuous. So you put t. Same thing like the type 1 where you cannot put the infinity because it, there's no value. But in this case also the same, you cannot put a because there's no value for the function if you put a. So that's why you need to put t and look at what happens as t approaches a from the positive side. Okay, the same thing also happened. There is a convergent or divergent integral depending on whether the limit exists or not. So if the limit exists, it is convergent. And if the limit does not exist, i.e. there is no limit because when t approaches that value, it becomes infinity, then it is divergent. Okay. And type C is that when F has a discontinuity at C and C is in the middle of A and B. So both A and C and C and B are convergent. Then we can define um, the integral from A to B. We stop somewhere at C. So from we separate the integral from A to C 
n from c to b because the function f becomes discontinuous when x is equal to c. So we need to separate and then uh, find the limit. Lah. Right, so next example is for type 2 in proper integral where we have a vertical asymptote. So we want to find the integral of this function 1 over set of x minus 2 from the limit um, x equals to 2 to uh, x equals to 5. So the steps are laid out here. So first we find the value of x where the integral will have discontinuity, where the integral will have asymptote. And then we write the integral in form of limit or integral combination and replace the limit with t where t approaches the value of x above, the value of x where it becomes um, discontinuous, where it, becomes, where it has an asymptote. Then we determine if the integral is convergent or divergent. If it is convergent, then we can evaluate the integral. Okay, do the example from 2 to 5, integrate x minus 2 dx. So from here, obviously, you can see straight away in this simple function that um, the function becomes discontinuous when x equals to 2 because then um, it will become 2 minus 2, then 1 over 0. Uh, well, this is just not right. Okay, I mean, it just couldn't happen. So this is where the asymptote is. So what you want to do next is to write in terms of limit integral combination. So you want to find out what happened when um, t approaches uh, 2 from the positive side, integrating from t to 5, 1 over x minus 2 dx. And you can simply um, integrate this one. So when you integrate x minus 2, negative 2, you have x minus 2, negative 1 over 2 plus 1 over negative 1 over 2 plus 1. So you will have um, 2 over, okay, so there, we put it here as t approaches 2 from the positive side, from the uh, right hand side. So 2, oh, I'm sorry, should be at the top because it becomes positive now, the power, okay? And we put the limit from t to 5. And then we put in 5 minus 2, minus 2 times t minus 2. And let's see what happens as t approaches 2. As t approaches 2 from the positive side, then this term will approach 0. Thus, the limit here becomes 2 set 3. So this is the limit of the integral and because it has a limit, thus this integral is, a, is convergent. It converges. Okay, final section of this week's topic is on comparison tests for improper integral. So when do we use comparison tests for improper integral and what is actually um, the comparison test for the improper integral? So we, um, when we are given a function it is that is impossible to find the exact value like it is a difficult function complicated function but we let's say it is important for us to know whether the function is convergent or divergent we want to compare against a much simpler function uh, that we know we can easily find out whether it converges or um, diverges because in our previous example uh, in the previous slides you are given simple uh, functions to find out whether it converges or diverges. You are given 1 over x, you are given x e minus x squared, you are given 1 over x minus 2, um, sort of x minus 2 for example. These are simple functions but what if you are given a more complicated functions like the ones that you saw um, before converting into partial fractions uh, previously in the previous previous slides. So um, we need to compare against a much simpler function. So what is the comparison theorem? 
So here, comparison theorem says that, okay, let's look at this graph here. So suppose you have um, two functions of x, fx and gx. Suppose that these functions f and g are continuous functions where fx is greater than gx and it's greater than 0 for the values of x greater than uh, a. Okay, so when x greater than a, you can see that function f and g are both um, continuous and that fx is greater than gx. So here, we can say that to gx here, gx is the one that is more complicated function. So fx is our function that we want to compare to determine if gx is convergent or divergent. So in this case, let's say if fx is divergent, uh, let, let's say in this case a here, sorry. Um, if fx is convergent, then we can deduce that gx is also convergent because gx is smaller than fx. Alright? You get that? I hope so. Okay. Okay, right now, let's say if we want to compare um, between gx and fx. So, if gx, if we, if we now want to know that, okay, now fx is our more complicated function and then we want to compare it with gx, which is a simpler function, let's say. So, we know that gx is smaller than fx. If the smaller function gx is divergent, thus, it only makes sense that fx is also divergent. Uh, it doesn't work the other way around, okay? So, but it doesn't mean that if fx is divergent, then gx is divergent. It doesn't mean that because fx is greater. So fx can be diverging when gx is, can be converging. So we need to find something that um, to compare with such that uh, we can see that uh, if one converges, another one converges as well. If, if one diverges, another one is also diverging. So why? Why do we need to use this uh, comparison test? Well, as I said before, is to simplify our lives. We want to find a simple function. Let's do uh, an example in the next slide to see the relevance of doing the comparison test to find out whether the function, the integral, is convergent or divergent. Okay, so in this example, we want to do a comparison test. So look at this function. Look at this function. It is um, both polynomial function uh, at the numerator and uh, denominator. So using comparison test, determine if the function here is convergent or divergent. So the steps here are, uh, first you want to find a simpler function fx to compare with the given function. So let's say in this case, the given function is your uh, gx. So then when we have a function fx, we want to um, determine if fx is convergent or divergent. And uh, But we need to determine also is if fx is larger or smaller than the given function. So we decide if fx is convergent uh, then and fx is larger than the given function, then this given function must be convergent. Okay, let's do that example. So the hardest part for this example is to actually find a simple function to compare the given function with. So let's um, write down the given function first. So this is your um, original function. Okay. So how to find a simpler function? Okay, let's say, let's say if I omit this um, one inside the third here. So I will have x over just x to the power of 6. Square it. Then I can simplify this as x um, over x cubed and uh, 1 over x squared. So I want to compare this given function here with this much simpler function. So I want to compare the integ uh, integral with the same limit, okay, from 1 to infinity of 1 over x squared um, dx, okay. So just notice or take note that Alright, for any function, for anything that is integrated between 1 and infinity for 1 over x to the power of anything, let's say just um, put any number n, okay, let's say n with respect to x. So if the value of n is greater than 1, the integral will converge. 
you have a limit because when n um, is greater as x approaches infinity then the value of 1 over infinity will converge to a small value however if n here is less than 1 then x to the power of something that is less than 1 when x become bigger um, as x approaches infinity the value down here will become smaller and then 1 over a small number will become big so there is no limit thus if n is smaller than 1 this whole integral here will diverge okay so compare this with the one that i have in the comparison function here dx there so i have 1 over x squared and this case 2 is the power which is greater than 1 thus this whole thing will converge convince yourself that this is convergent okay so what i'm going to say here is that this 1 over x squared okay this 1 over x squared initially is x over x um, square root of x to the power of 6 so let's just have a look at this x to the power of 6 and compare it with the de denominator of the original function so if you compare x to the power of 6 with um, 1 plus x to the power of 6 which one is bigger hmm? any value of x given any value of x um, x this one or this one is bigger it must be this one right so uh, 1 plus x to the power of 6 square root of it is always bigger than the square root of x to the power of 6 so when something divide by this okay okay this is bigger than this so this whole thing is bigger than that do you agree with me huh? this whole thing here is bigger than this thing at the right hand side so this our function here fx is the upper function okay i don't know how this curve looks like but uh, just for comparison's sake, this is your fx, 1 over x squared, and this is your gx here, which is your uh, given function in the question. Okay, so in this case, we don't want to know the convergent value. We just want to find out whether the integral from 1 to infinity x divided by square root of 1 plus x to the power of 6, is it convergent? or divergent and we use a comparison function which is 1 over x squared and we know that 1 over x squared is greater than x over square root of 1 plus x to the power of 6 and that 1 over x squared is convergent thus we conclude that this must also be convergent okay that's all for comparison test and that's all for the week 8 so if in actual class i would be actually spending three hours two hours on wednesday and one hour on thursday but since we are doing pre-recorded so the total hours for this uh, whole thing in week uh, of integration topic of integration is uh, less than two hours in the recording but I'm sure you can take your time to pause and repeat whenever necessary and pause and try to do the examples at your own time. But we will see um, each other in a synchronous class on Thursday, 10 a.m. Okay, thank you.